Hey everybody, it's Andy. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the Tom Ben Shadow Guide 33. This bag was generously provided to me by Tom Ben so that I could do a review, and I'm hoping to give you everything you need to know about this bag. If you like content like this and want to see more, please like the video, leave a comment below, and subscribe to my channel. It really helps. Tom Ben made the guides pack a long time ago. It's their brightly colored, heritage style hiking back with the top loader that cinches and all the attachment points. From there, they went on to make the Shadow Guide, a more city, sleek style bag that doesn't have all those points of attention that you might see on the hiking one where you can attach things, something that might blend in with the crowd. Now, the Shadow Guide V2 takes these bags and goes one step further. Not only does it have increased capacity from the old Shadow Guide, but they are also going to offer it in a smaller size. This is the 33, they're also gonna offer a 23 liter size. And this has a lot of those new features. Let's take a look. The bulk of the bag is made out of this 525D ballistic nylon. This is the preferred material by Tom Ben right now for most of their bags. It's almost as strong, they claim, as their 1050D ballistic nylon, which we still see on the bottom, making sure that when you put the bag down, you know your stuff is gonna be safe. They offer the bag in two colors. I have here the black, but they also have their Ursa, which is a nice dark earthy brown. Over at the front, we see these two Duraflex clips on these webbing attachments holding down the lid of the bag. I'll get more to those a bit later. Down here, we have the Tom Ben Design Lab logo with the three dot therefore symbol. That's just telling you that this bag is going to have a lot of new stuff. Looking over at the bottom also, in addition to this 1050D ballistic nylon going all the way up around. There's this attachment point of webbing here where you can put one of their guardian lights or something else if you want. The sides of the bag are pretty bare, but on this side, we do have a laptop compartment built in. This laptop compartment is pretty big. It goes the whole height of the bag and it goes all the way deep into it. My 13 inch MacBook Pro fits in super easily. Inside the laptop compartment, we have their lighter aether material, the same thing that they make their packing cubes out of, and I think that works fine. It's not a super soft, like, velvety thing, but it's enough to make sure that your laptop is going to be safe. Now over here, we start to see the zipper pulls. Uh, this is something new for the Tom Ben Design Lab bag. This here is a uh, plastic or rubbery pull attached via this cord to the zipper itself. That's different from what they normally would use on their bags, where you have the metal jangly Y-Kick hay zipper pull, and then you can add a paracord attachment to that. I think this is a really nice addition, and I look forward to see these on more of Tom Ben's bag. Over here at the back, we have the edgeless shoulder straps that they debuted on the Cynic series of bags. I think these are great shoulder straps. They really, uh, you know, they don't dig into your neck or your shoulders at all, and they really help with the load. Over here, the back panel, we have something else that's new. Instead of the traditional uh, meshy material with a smooth layer of foam, we actually have what is a skeleton style rib design with five sets of ribs going down and then one air channel in the middle. This way, you won't get as sweaty as a back or as sweaty of a back as you might have with a normal fully foam padded bag. I think this is quite comfortable to wear, and I applaud Tom Ben for rethinking how they do this. Over here, behind this back panel, there is a uh, frame sheet, a plastic frame sheet, the same sort that they normally use, that's accessible from the top or the bottom. And there's an aluminum stay on the frame sheet that goes right up until here, just above the ferret rib. It would have been nice for the frame sheet stay to go all the way up the height of the bag, so you could really conform it to your back, but it makes sense that they do it this way, so that over at the pelvic area, you really get that support you need. You can make it so that it doesn't dig into your back while letting the top uh, sort of fit with you and with the stuff you have in it. A bit of flexibility does help sometimes. And down here at the bottom, we have a attachment with a waist belt. This isn't so much uh, something that you're going to rest the bag on, but it helps provide some stability. And here I will demonstrate. We've got the sternum strap on the edgeless shoulder pads, and then we have the waist belt so that the bag stays on your back. Uh, this can be especially useful if you're using this on a motorcycle like they have in some of the Tom Ben advertisements. 
Over at the top of the bag, we have this, uh, the lid. Um, behind the lid is this handle. It's this sort of seatbelt feeling nylon, and I think it's very pleasant to the touch. It, uh, you know, it doesn't scrape your hand like traditional webbing would, and it's plenty fine to lift the bag up. A bag this big doesn't, I think, need a super padded handle. The lid has uh, two attachments with Duraflex buckles, and then in there, there are three pockets, two on the bottom and one on the top. The bottom pockets are accessed via the zippers going down the length of the side. In this one, I have a, a chapstick, some keys attached to the included tandem key leash. Um, each of these pockets has an O-ring where you can attach these. And I also have the, the tag that came with the bag. Looking in the other side, I have a lotion, my wallet, this is the uh, capsule accomplice, and attached to the O-ring over here, my AirPods case. You can see that uh, these pockets are sewn in by this thing in the middle, so you get two halves of the bottom. And while they don't have the most volume, they're good for flat things or smaller items like I put in there. Looking at the big pocket on the lid, this is accessed from behind the back of the bag. And this, they did it so that if the lid is hanging over, uh, you can open it without having all your stuff spill out. Uh, in the previous versions of the bag, you actually had to lift it up to get in without having everything fall down. In this pocket, I was able to fit my Tombin Sidekick. This is my preferred shoulder bag. And it fit in with uh, a significant amount of space remaining. This is really a, a big pocket, and you can see on top of this, I could fit quite a bit if I wanted. Um, and now that's a good thing that you can fit a lot because these three pockets are the principal organization in the bag. One uh, thing that I would want to improve if I were redesigning this, or some feedback for Tom Bin, is that the square shape of the lid makes it a bit difficult to zip, especially if the bag is full or if it's pulled down. Getting the zippers around these corners isn't always the easiest thing, and it's not the sort of move that you can really do with one hand. It would have been nice if they made this more rounded off so that you could do it as a quick one-handed operation. Anyway, beneath the lid, we have another little handle here so that if you want to hang it up while it's open, you can put that. This is a normal weapon. And we have the cinch pocket. There's a pulley thing on the end of the paracord that you can use to tighten. And I think one of the things that I really like about this compared to some of the other cinch bags I've seen is that it seems like it cinches deliberately. And what I mean by that is that the way the cord is woven through, the bag folds identically every way. You really have, you know, these two points going together and then this one going towards that. And it feels like a nice uh, even tightening. I've never really seen that on a full cord bag before. The one drawback of this though is because the cord is sort of loose on the inside, sometimes if you're trying to fit a larger item in or out of the bag, it can get caught on the cord. I had that happen to me once or twice. Anyway, in here, we have the large bucket of the top loading bag. In here, I'm able to fit a lot of items. In fact, I was able to fit everything I needed for a weekend travel trip. So as you can see, I was able to fit in not only a pair of clothes alongside with uh, the down jacket and everything I need to be warm, the hat and gloves, but I was also able to get in a keyboard and a laptop stand and my over-the-ear headphones, my tech kit, all of that stuff. So, what do I have in the bag right now? Well, going from the top, I've got here my Tumbin side effect. This is where I keep all the items that I use when traveling that aren't usually clothing related. I have my Tumbin Everyday Cubelet. This is what I've been using as my daily side bag during COVID. I have a water bottle. It's just sort of shoved in there. Uh, this is the Camelback Chute. Now, one of the big complaints that I hear about this bag when I look at the forums and on Facebook is that people really wish there was some organization for a water bottle in here. You just sort of have to, to put it in and trust that it won't spill over, which I think is reasonable in a bag like this. You know it's not going to go anywhere because of the way that you pack it. On top of those, I have uh, some armbands that I use for typing, hat and gloves. Basically, I've just shoved in a bunch of stuff. Uh, my Tombin 
3D organizer cube with some sanitary stuff and lotion, an Eco Creek packing cube, socks and underwear, my Tumbin Aeronaut 30 packing cube backpack, that's all the clothes that I use on a trip, and then my down jacket. So we're able to fit quite a bit comfortably in this bag. So all of this just fit into this large cabinet main compartment. Now normally, I'm not the sort of person who uses a top loader backpack like this. I'm a big fan of the clamshell bags where I can open and see everything, but I definitely get the appeal after having used this. It's easy to just stuff things in and keep stuffing in a way where you might feel uncomfortable doing if you were worried about a zipper having to zip that bag closed or even breaking. With this, I knew that even if the bag was filled all the way to the top, I could put the lid over, and thanks to these generously long um, handle or like webbing bits, even if the bag is loaded up to the max, I could still get that shut. In fact, when I was trying to pack this thing out, I fit 25 pounds of chocolate in addition to six rolls of toilet paper twice in the main compartment and another two up here. So I got 14 rolls of toilet paper and 25 pounds of chocolate in this bag. You can watch my video on that showing how I loaded it out. The Tumbin Shadow Guide 33 is on that larger size, the uh, 30 to 35 liter size bag, which makes it good for traveling. What is an alternative that comes to mind for me is the Tumbin Aeronaut 30, right here. So I'm going to show that I can stuff the things that I put in the Shadow Guide 33 in the Aeronaut 30 to give you a sense for how big this is. If I go into the main compartment here and take out this blanket I used to give it volume, I can fit the Aeronaut 30 packing cube, as intended. And then I can get a few other things on top. The down jacket, the other packing cube. Um, maybe I can fit my side effect. And getting all of these in the top compartment frees up the side compartments for hats and gloves, uh, armbands, my everyday cubelet, and then on the other side, I can fit my sidekick. All of this in the Aeronaut 30 is a bit of a tight fit. Uh, it fit in the Shadow Guide with plenty of room, but you can see that they are rather similar in size. The Aeronaut 30, though, doesn't have a dedicated laptop compartment. Another bag that might be interesting is uh, the Mystery Ranch 2-Day Assault Pack. This is a similar size and shape to the Shadow Guide, but it has uh, a lot more of a military tech feel and it has the uh, three zip design, so you can get into the main compartment from the top and down the center, in addition to these external water bottle compartments. If you're looking for something that you want to be rugged and you want to go like in the military or out hunting or something, you might want a bag a bit more akin to this. But if you're going in the city and you want to try to stay sleek, I think the Shadow Guide 33 does a great job. The Tom Ben Shadow Guide 33 comes in at a $280 price point, and it weighs just below two and a half pounds. It's a bag that really knows what it wants. It gives you this sleek aesthetic, but the versatility to use it as a city bag, as a hiking bag, as a travel bag, it really fits in everywhere. I like the fact that it has a lot of the new features the Tom Ben Design Lab has included, especially the new zipper pulls and the back panel. However, I think some of the improvements that they made could have been done a bit better, most notably the zip over on the top panel I wish was easier to use. Still, I think this is a great bag and I'll look forward to having it for many years to come. If you like content like this and want to see more, please like this video, smash the like button, leave a comment below, and subscribe to my channel. I want to thank you very much for watching the video and a special thanks to Tom Ben for providing this bag for review. If you want to get the bag or any of the other things that I've put in the bag, I'm going to have links in the description below. Thank you very much, and have a good day.